Brie Crane, and I wrote Guide for the Practical Piratical, which includes music by Andrew Roan, Dan Kennedy, and Nick Stanton. All right, I'll be the bigger man here. Person, person, I'll be the bigger person. <laughs> mistakes were made back on the ship there. And some of those mistakes may have been mine. <laughs> yeah. 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 Shut your build, you scurvy rascals. I work me fingers to the bone to ensure a more equitable division of the booty. Yeah, one I beat here will hornswoggle you out of all your hard earned ability. Not true! Not true at all! If things keep going the way they are, the Barbary Corsairs will steal our ship and our job. Yeah! There's not a man jack of you hasn't benefited from my policy of providing each and every one of you flea infested. Got eight pox ridden rascals, free leeches! Three, four! Come on, ye hearty seamen, take heed to what I say. The thirst for gold and treasure will steal your soul away. If you can't help your fellow man, Love your neighbor well, your heart will shrivel like a stone, make this world a hell. Oh, make this world a hell. So it's doggy dog, grab your share of treasure, but the world's a nasty, brutish place if we can't work. Uh, you didn't have any skin in the game. 
Why'd you do it? As ridiculous as it seems now, I actually agreed with some of what you were trying to do. I believed in you. So among all the lawless pirates of the open sea, you found something worth fighting for. I guess so. Although in hindsight, I'm not entirely sure it's worth dying for. Uh, you've never been in a real fight before, have you, cabin person? <laughs> and. 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 If it's not worth your life, it's not your fight. The universe doesn't pull any punches, and if you ever get out of this boat, neither can you. Is, is that a mermaid? Do you see that? <laughs> I do indeed, in all my years! Do all mermaids look like my mom? <laughs> oh. Okay, uh, that's not a mermaid then, that's a hallucination. Then why can we both see her? Shh, don't think too hard. <laughs> I warned you this would happen. I said, don't leave me, Anne. You'll hurt yourself, or worse, you'll get in trouble with some man. <laughs> always stubborn, always quick to tell me no. Well, honey, take a look around. I hate to say I told you so. <laughs> I don't think she hates it at all. <laughs>
generous of you, Anne, but wholly unnecessary. You won't die first. <laughs> Don't say that, Captain. Uh, you're young-ish, uh, relatively healthy. You're not Captain, listening. Captain, he has you a bit. And you can't die first. It's not possible. <laughs> Don't say that, Captain. Nothing is impossible. It's not that I want to die. It's just that I want you to live, Captain. It's not about what you want, Anne. It hasn't been about what you wanted since the moment we set foot on this boat. What are you saying? You know exactly what I'm saying. These are your words, after all. I mean, what self-respecting pirate captain talks like this? Your first time at sea, never been in a fight, certainly never handled a flintlock pistol before. It's not as easy as it looks. No, you're lying. I tried to shoot a fish. I missed. <clears throat> no, Anne, you didn't. You couldn't have fired it if you tried. I did. I made that choice. And I took that choice away from you in that moment. I'm a little bit sorry for that, but only a little bit. I don't, I don't know if I can do what I need to, to do to, sur to survive. And it's been eight days. You already have. <laughs> There's no shame in that. I never asked you to do this for me. You didn't have to. A good captain does what's needed without being asked. Remember that. You may need to someday. You're worth dying for, Anne. I don't know that I am. But I will be. I can promise you that, Captain. Thank you.